Hey everyone, I'm here to talk about something important today that I don't think gets enough attention in the resin 3D printing community, but I do think along with uh, temperature, shaking your resin, and making sure your bed is level, is actually a really important factor in getting really good prints. Especially these days with uh, so many Patreons and even Kickstarters starting to offer pre-supported models. What I'm seeing from a lot of failures in various uh, Patreons and even sometimes in Artisans Guild where I'm doing the supports is people who have adhesion is fine. You see that the uh, attached the build plate is the bottom of their support. Supports go up really nicely formed and everything's fine. And then all of a sudden, boom, the model has separated from the supports. And the quick and easy answer for everyone, it's an answer I give myself sometimes, is that your settings might not be dialed in and you might need an extra half second or one second on your normal exposure time. It can also be that the area or room you're printing in is too cold. Uh, when it's cold, the, the resin becomes a lot more viscous and that attributes a lot to peel force and can lead to failure. So temperature is really important. Shaking your resin and make sure it's mixed up properly is important. Uh, some of the fails I've seen are honestly because some of the supports done, the various supports I've seen, some of them are too light. They're too light in the wrong places, so it will result in some failures. But what about when the supports are done properly and you still get these failures? Well, one of the things that, that we don't talk about enough uh, in our community are, is the peel forces. And specifically, what I want to talk about is correcting it by lift speed. So in your printer settings, uh, in Chitta Box, wherever slice you have, there's a lift speed. And that is the speed that the plate lifts out of the resin, taking hopefully the print off of the FEP as it goes up. Now, think of uh, if you've ever stepped in really wet, thick mud. You must have done this or seen it done. I've done it myself when I was a kid. And I think one time when I was golfing as an adult, stepped in mud that was really thick and wet, went to pull my leg out real quick and boom, my shoe was stuck in the mud. Had definitely happened when I was golfing. I had to reach in and pull my shoe out. We well, also know if you've ever done it, I'm sure no one's ever tested, I guess, like this, but when you step in that mud, it's almost like pulling a Band-Aid off in the same way. The, the forces of adhesion and suction create it. If you try to rip, the faster you try to rip your foot off out of that mud, the more suction is actually created by, by you trying to pull out of it quickly all at once. If you pull out very slowly, there's less adhesion, less suction created, less, in terms of resin printing, peel force is created. So, in, so if you're having some fails, it is possible it's caused by your lift speed being too fast. If you slow down that lift speed, if it's coming off uh, slower, coming up slower, it's creating less force on the model as it's coming up, less likely that's going to separate from your supports at those thin points where they contact. If your peel force exceeds the adhesion of those tips of the supports, your model's going to stick to the FEP instead of the supports, right? So, because there's also the adherence to the FEP as well. So there's a lot of, I don't want to get into the weeds on physics, okay? So the short answer to this video for the people who like the short version is, if you're having these kind of fails, but you know your bed is level, you know your temperature is good, you're shaking your resin, and you're pretty sure the supports just aren't wrong, that they're not just too thin. Like let's say you see 90% of people are getting good prints with them, and you know your resin exposure is right, and you don't wanna just increase your exposure to compensate by you know one or two seconds and then start to lose detail. So it might just be that what you need to do is slow your lift speed down. I normally use um, six centimeters per minute, um, uh, 60, 60 millimeters a second, I'm sorry. And, and on some models, though, you might need to go down to 30 or 40 if, if the supports are super duper delicate and you have a large surface area cross section of the model printing at some points where it's being held by those supports. Slowing the lift speed down will reduce those peel forces and might give you success on those models. So the faster that lift speed, you know, and, and some models you can do pretty fast lift speed and it'll work. But if, if there's a large cross section of the model printing and the supports are not huge holding it up, your peel force, if you're going fast, will exceed the force of the supports holding to the model and therefore you'll pull off your model. So lift speed is very important. So everyone out there, if you're having fails, double check your lift speed, even if it's something reasonable, 
like 60, 50, 60, 70 should all be fine for most models. But if you're experiencing fail, say with a bigger, thicker model from a Patreon or from a Kickstarter, take your list speed down to 40 and see if it works or even down to 30. Now, you increase the time it takes to do a print, obviously, but better, you know, instead of you have a four hour print of a figure, better it's a five hour print and it's successful than four hours and stuck to your FEP and you have to clean your vat for 15, 20 minutes and then print it again. So you might spend 10 hours printing that model instead of five hours if you just printed it with a lower lift speed. I'm one of those people, I want speed, so I also, I'm always pushing the boundaries. I want to go as fast as possible without fails. But certain models you just look at, I look at at least, and I look at them and the way they're supported and how delicate they are and this and that, and I say, you know what? Have to lower the lift speed on this one. I need to reduce the peel forces, uh, which, are, which are a key factor in causing failures. So now we know everything we need to do. Shake the resin. Make sure the bed is perfectly level. Uh, make sure it's warm enough so our resin, remember, the thicker the resin, it's like thick mud. If mud is really loose and soupy, you can pull things in and out of it quite easily. The thicker it gets, the harder it gets to pull things in and out because the peel force is increased by the viscosity of the liquid. So if your resin is thick and viscous and cold, uh, peel forces are increased, you're going to fail. So temperature is still really important. So, But this last tip is... Peel force is affected by speed, so you want to really monitor your lift speed if you're having fails. And even if you're having fails where other people aren't, and they're saying, well, I'm doing it at, at six millimeters a second, you might have to go down to four for whatever reason. Every machine is different. Every resin is different. You might think your resin dialed in at, say, six second exposure. Maybe it really needs to be like 6.1 or 6.18, you know, something that you're not going to be able to precisely calibrate. So... Lowering your lift speed will help compensate for when you don't have exactly perfect settings either. So that's it for today. Hopefully, uh, this tip on lowering your lift speed will help you to get better prints, especially on those pre-supported models where you might be having fails. Uh, but even on the ones where you're doing your own supports, lower the lift speed if you have a lot of delicate small supports or a lot of delicate small pieces on the model. Lowering that lift speed gets you more success. Thanks. Uh, please like. Please subscribe. I have a Patreon now. Please check it all out. And happy 3D printing.